it seems like we're suffering from a little bit of a time warp. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of our Custom House playthrough. This series is going strong, and I'm really excited to let you know that I've made the decision to time warp us into the Andal Invasion. And if we back out and look at the map, you can see this is, uh, is one of those new sub-mods that came out for this uh, just this last week, the end of the week, um, and I've been really excited for these. I've been really excited to, to play through them, and I've been doing that a little bit this weekend, and I um, couldn't be happier with, with how the mods are. There's bugs, obviously, but there is with everything, um, and the devs have done such a good job with, uh, with all of these mods and sub-mods, and um, so I'm excited to bring you this. This is our custom house playthrough that we started um, just after Aegon's Conquest before, but we've time jumped a little bit into the past, a um, couple thousand years, <laughs> and uh, I've kind of set up the game exactly how we had it, not exactly, but, but close to how we had it in that time frame, um, and so I'm pleased to bring you this... Um, this playthrough now in a new time frame. We are currently the Lord of Pink Maiden, and uh, I'm gonna take a moment. We're gonna we're gonna look through some stuff with this sub mod. If you haven't downloaded it yet and you are looking for kind of a review of it, um, this is the Andal Invasion one only. There's two others. Uh, I have a, a new playthrough starting this week from one of the others. I'm not gonna spoil the surprise, but um, if you haven't seen any playthroughs with this or you you don't know what to expect we're going to kind of take a look at everything um get an idea of how uh the sub mod works what's going on all that kind of stuff who's who's available and who's not and what what exactly is going on with history so um let's jump into that and then we'll start off uh with what we're doing today in the playthrough so obviously the biggest aspect of these sub mods is an intact valyrian peninsula and the ability to not only uh play as one of the great ancient Valyrian houses, but also to um, unite the Valyrian freehold. And so um, Valyria has a lot of different uh, vassals, I suppose that that's what you would call them, um, throughout Essos, and uh, also into like Slaver's Bay, all of that, um, and very powerful, and um, each High Valyrian or each Valyrian, um, I, I guess, freehold um, landholder um, begins each playthrough with a Valyrian steel sword and a dragon. And so there are a ton of dragons in the world right now, uh, all varying in, in size and strength and age. Uh, none of them are terribly old, um, but I have a feeling that without the, like, with like pre Doom, um, that we're going to end up with quite a bit of, of super powerful dragons here before very long, uh, which is exciting and also just a, a little bit a little bit scary. Um, <laughs> but uh, you might notice that there's a couple of uh, really important characters dotted throughout. Uh, House Targaryen is represented uh, somewhere in here. I'm trying to f figure out exactly where they're at. But yeah, House Targaryen is, is uh, scattered in here somewhere. Um, not a major house, but... Um, you know, still uh, going strong in Valyria. And it's it's really awesome to be able to see, because uh, I'm used to like the, <laughs> the the map and the way the map looks after the Doom. And, and um, you know, this, this aspect of um, Game of Thrones history is, is kind of uh, not really my specialty. Um, it's something that I'm, I'm learning about and something that I'm really interested in, but I, I know quite a bit about the, you know, in-game time or, or uh, events that are contemporary to the series and maybe a little bit to, you know, the events leading up to Robert's Rebellion and all that kind of stuff. I know that kind of stuff. Um, and I know, you know, the characters and all that kind of stuff. Some of this stuff is very, um, very new to me and stuff that I'm still learning about. Um, one of the key aspects um, is the separated north. Uh, so you have the the north, obviously, and the king in the north, who is a Stark, um, and then you also have the kingdom of the Dreadfort and um, Red King Roger, uh, Rogar, 
um, the kingdom of the dread, the dread fort and the Boltons actually like held their own kingdom title and warred against the Starks um, before the kingdom united um, when the Andals were invading. And you also have the county of Wolfden and um, I believe it's not in this playthrough, maybe in the other one, um, did you actually have House Greystark um, right here, which is a cadet house of, of like a like a actual canon cadet house of House Stark uh, that was present in what was um, White Harbor, or what would become White, Hi White Harbor. And um, you actually have House Manderley uh, somewhere down here, I think. I'm trying to remember exactly where they're at. I found a lot of a lot of these houses kind of as I was looking just because they were so interesting. Um, but House Manderley is actually down here in the Reach, and you, you actually like see the game set up prior to some of the major events that have happened. Uh, another weird thing, especially in this particular uh, submod, is that everybody is first man culture. Yeah, everybody in Westeros is first man culture, um, except for you know a few key characters who are known to not be. But it's it's kind of different to not have kind of the culture barrier um, across an entire continent that is so different. Um, you know the the different cultures, especially for particular regions, in in the you know original format of the game are you know. They make sense. You have, you know, this the southern, um, you know, former Andal uh, cultures, Riverman, Stormlander, Kingslander, you know, Reachmen, Dornishmen. Everybody though, is first man culture. Even down in Dorn, which just looks weird to me because you, I think first men and I think the North. It's just the way my brain is programmed um, after playing this, you know, the original submod for so many hours. And so uh, it's a little bit different. It, it takes some getting used to. There's some kind of map gore going on here, right, where the Riverlands and the Vale are, um, and even into the, the Kingdom of the Rock a little bit. Um, and it's it's different. It's it's interesting because it's not what you would expect. It's not... It's it's all going all sorts of different directions. And so I've, I'm currently using the Realms uh, map view, and... <laughs> I can't figure out which map view looks best for this particular aspect. I think we're going to have to just deal with a little bit of map gore for a little while until we're able to kind of expand our kingdom, um, so to speak. And, you know, if push comes to shove, we'll be able to, you know, I'll, I'll change if you guys are really interested in that. Um, it does, it, it is a little bit difficult to... Uh, it's a little bit difficult to, to determine which one would look best because even if you get into like direct vassals it looks almost identical with maybe a, a few more changes um, even de jure high lordships it fixes the coloration a little bit um, but that's not like current that's just de jure so there's there's a couple different things that that make it a little bit difficult to choose especially where we're at in kind of the guts of Westeros um, another aspect that's a little bit different is Old Town is a ruin, and um, Faith of the Seven is is not a not a thing in Westeros. Everybody is old gods, and um, which is which is a little bit different. I don't I don't know that there's a, I don't know if there's even yeah there's Faith of the Seven right here in this little pocket of uh, Andalos or what was Andalos and, and is now. Um, Oh, it's still Andalus right here, and Seven's River. Um, it, it's just this little pocket of, of Faith of the Seven, um, kind of in northern Essos, uh, where like Bravos and Cohor are later on. And it's just, there's, there's not a lot of religion diversity in Westeros. Uh, it's all old gods, basically, and then drowned gods, obviously, right here. Um, even the Storm Kings are old god first man in House Durandon. So... I, it is different. It ta it's taking some getting used to as I've kind of been playing and, and setting this thing up. Um, I, I don't want to uh, kind of spoil all of the different things in the mod, but I did kind of want to take you through. There's um, the Kingdom of the Aitai over here. Lots of different stuff going on in the East. Um, but really the, the cool thing is, is everything going on with the... Um, the great houses in Westeros, some of them haven't even, you know, cropped up yet. Um, and it's, 
it's just a little different. It's, it takes some getting used to, and it, it takes some playthrough in order to make sure that you, uh, you know, you're 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 cemented in everything that's happening. Um, there's Andal invasions going on uh, currently, and most of them are coming from uh, right over here. But also there's uh, tribal invasions and you know pirate lord invasions for all these coastal counties. Uh, the reason I clicked up here on the sisters is because um, the Sisterman culture, they're actually uh, doing some invading up over here um, already, or this early on in the, in the, in the game time frame. So um, yeah, that's kind of the map, and that's kind of what we're looking at in terms of you know, what's going on in Westeros and, and the time frame that we're in. Uh, we're going to deal with Andal invasions throughout the entire um, the playthrough, I anticipate, and uh, at least until those kind of calm down. Um, but, you know, being a custom house seated right in the middle of Westeros, right in the heart, I mean, like literally right in the heart of Westeros, um, hopefully we're able to kind of expand our territory. We've done a good job so far, and uh, we're going to keep on working on that front. The other thing is, you know, Heron Hall is not built yet, but there is God's Fort, um, which is the same thing. It's at least in the in the mod. It's the same thing. It's still Fort Level Seventeen. It's a large Riverlands castle. It's a Heron Hall castle. I, I'm sure that's going to be patched later on. But that's, I mean, for us right now, that's that's good. That's a good thing because we're looking for a big castle which to occupy and make our uh, our seat. So let's get into exactly what we're doing as this custom house is House Bear in the heart of Westeros during the Andal invasion. So I know that this has already been a chatty episode and it's gonna to continue to be so for just a little bit, so bear with me. Um, <laughs> anyways, um, so we are Lord Aegon of House um, Bear, which we were in the, you know, the previous timeline of this playthrough. Um, and, you know, similar stats, I still need to go through and make sure all the base stats are the same, uh, just to make sure everything comes out, you know, I want to give us the, the closest possible uh, experience to what we had going before. But, huge thing, I actually took the time over the weekend to sit and do a sigil for House Bear. And it, it took me a while because there's 824 different, um, different sigils in slot one of the um, Coat of Arms uh, customizer. And so, it took me a while but I found a bear. And there's a couple different bears. This is the one I like the best. The next one's kind of on the ground. I like the bear, you know, reared up in fighting position. Um, I, the, the bear head didn't really look very bearish and the, the tongue kind of freaked me out a little bit. So, and then we could do the claw, but lots of animals have claws. Um, I wanted to see the full bear. It, it does look very similar to House Mormont, but uh, our colors are a little different. Um, it's, we have a, a field of white and then a black bear. Um, and just to make it kind of unique um, and kind of muted neutral colors, uh, it, it doesn't really rep represent the Riverlands because you know we're not technically gonna stay in the Riverlands. We're gonna, we're gonna kind of move on. The sigil may grow and adapt as we play um, and as we take on different characters and have different characters kind of uh, fit the bill a little bit differently, um, but that is Currently, what we're what we're up against. This is what we're doing. We're uh, what we're dealing with um, with our sigil. I, I like it. I, I like it a lot more than just the generic one that I had been using um, in the previous episodes. So it, we finally have a sigil for House Bear. I'm really excited about it. Um, and unfortunately, we weren't able to kind of import like uh, characters or anything like that in, in the same manner. Um, and I, I didn't really want to because it doesn't really fit. It'd be really, really difficult for the second generation of a um, kind of minor house in the heart of the Riverlands over in Westeros, especially just a High Lord, uh, to marry a High Valyrian girl. And it's not going to happen in this playthrough, at least not yet. It is still our goal to kind of breed Valyrian into our house line, but it's not going to happen anytime soon because... There's the whole religion separation. Um, and really what we're going to end up having to do, I think, 
is um, through a little bit of intrigue, we're going to end up having to kidnap a High Valyrian daughter, something, and uh, and use our, our skills in the dungeon to produce a bastard child that bears similar um, traits, similar religion in order to begin to marry in to a High Valyrian house and have them in our court. I think if we can manage to have them in our court, then they can't deny a marriage repo marriage proposal. Um, but as long as they're out and we're, you know, we're trying to, to bring them in, and it's going to be very, very difficult. So um, I wasn't able to import our High Valyrian bride or any of our children yet, um, but we are going to do that this episode. We're going to find a, a bride. We're going to try to produce an heir. Um, you may notice I kind of ticked my age back a little bit. Um, instead of 32, we're 29, just to give us a little bit more of a, uh, just a little buffer uh, while we figure out exactly how we're going to approach um, marriage, producing an heir, all that kind of stuff. And uh, yeah, the, this is the point that we're currently at. This is what we're dealing with. Um, the plans still kind of remain the, remain the same um, as we're as we're going here. We're going we're um, we're looking at taking God's Fort or what was Heron Hall um, from of God's Fort, um, kind of a lower house, uh, independent. And, and currently with nobody. I think the High Lordship is still down here in House, nope, Butter Hall. I need to look and see. There may not even be a High Lordship created yet. And so, yeah, there's not a High Lordship created yet for this area. So once we take God's Fort, we can actually move our capital there, and then we can begin to take these other counties and um, create the High Lordship and uh, from there, we can incorporate all of these counties around the God's Eye, have three duchies, and cr and crown ourselves king. Um, so that's kind of that's kind of the goal, the main goal of the playthrough of the series right now, um, and kind of the the direction that we're heading. Immediately, uh, it it is a little bit difficult to to know when it's going to happen, um, but it should happen in the near future, I think. And then we'll begin our plans for expansion throughout Westeros. Um, I don't anticipate that we're going to, like, create a kingdom of Westeros. I don't know, though. Uh, we might. It just depends on, on how things begin to play out with the Andal invasion. I want us to be fully prepared to, uh, to thwart any Andal invasions right here in the center of Westeros. So, that's where we're currently at. Those are our goals. Let's get in and let's start playing. Excellent. I think I found the perfect bride for us. Um, she is Therona of House Tarly, um, who still has the first, for the first man uh, culture. They're, they're currently courtiers in Last Hearth, so it's going to damage our prestige a little bit, but that's okay because she is strong and quick. Two amazing congenital traits right there. Um, so I'm excited about that. I'm also going to begin to find a, um, a good uh, a good High Valyrian girl to attempt to kidnap. And uh, I don't know exactly, I don't see necessarily anyone with congenital traits. I've been looking through. Um, I see a lot of slaves, but uh, don't need that for sure. Although that might be a good way to to do it if we're slave owners. I don't even know if that's really like a like a thing in ancient Westeros. I suppose it is. Kind of has to be, right? But it's like of course, like I said the religion's really going to be the hindering thing. I'm not even sure that we're going to be able to um, like be within sort of intrigue range, so to speak, in order to get the event to fire. And I think it's going to take some careful planning and um, kind of dealing. And I, I suppose it really doesn't matter that this person have good congenital traits. I just want them to be High Valyrian and not... Preferably not fat-faced. 
if we're, I mean, if we're going to, like, if we're going to try to breed good traits into our house line, we don't want them to be, you know, disgusting looking. So, this girl doesn't have good traits, but that's okay. She's still high Valyrian. She's a spy master, so I doubt we're going to have very good plot power. Um, it's going to take some more looking. I don't think we want to, I don't think we're going to be able to kidnap. That's decent plot power. But she's associate Valyrian. Which I guess isn't terrible. It's just not what we're, I think we're going to be breeding in, and we're actually going to be producing people that are, are traits that are um, like Westerosi Valyrian. I think we're going to create that. I don't think that exists right now. Yeah, not a ton of plot power. And that's the that's the difficult thing is we got to find the right situation, we got to find the right mix of plot power, and plot target. Let me see if I can find a good target for this. Okay, so I found a good target, and um, I'm kind of excited about this. She doesn't have great stats, um, and all of this is right here, but she does have lustful, so the fertility is high, and also the plot power. The possible plot power is in the hundreds. Um, she's able to, there's 50% right there, so that's like 91.6. There's 21% right there, so that's like 112.6. And then there's another 20% right there, so that's like 132.6, I believe. M m quick math is really not what I'm, um, like my strongest suit. But I, th I think that that's good enough for us to like really, um, have a shot at this and also um we can't get like arrested for this plot i don't think um we should be able to like complete it without any risk and not have to worry about it i hope okay i've gotten all of my stats fixed i've gotten my gold fixed to where it was at the end of the last episode and uh, now I think we can begin to uh, go ahead and advance in the timeline. This is a little, a little, little different, but yeah, we're going to go ahead and advance. Hopefully, yep, there's that um, marriage proposal right there that comes through. I don't know if I get a dowry from a courtier. I can still do much good. Okay, so I'm going to go on a carousing with one of my lords, the Lord of Castlewood. I'm not going to do it too often, though, because I don't want to gain, like, the drunkard trait or anything like that. Hmm. I don't think I have to worry about the plot being revealed. Where is it at right now? 120 plot power. But it only has two backers. I thought we had a third. I guess that person chickened out. I don't know. Hopefully that event fires pretty quickly. I'm hoping. Um, I'm not going to com compete in the melee right now. Okay, we become best friends. <laughs> oh man. Cool, and get a little bit of prestige. Okay, so I wonder if we can uh, our wife actually likes us. That's a little bit of a change. Did she just get ruthless? No, she got her uh, gruff diplomat, right? Am I making that up? I don't know. Oh, we can found a new kingdom with just two duchy titles. And 200 gold. Huh. 
Huh. Interesting. I'm still going to wait until we get God for it. I'm hoping that that claim comes through rather quickly because you never, you never know. Honey, give the one more chance.